Welcome to the Misfit One Lifestyles with Elizabeth Colon. She will awaken and connect with your Misfit One. Are you tired of the ups and downs in your life? Are you ready to live a healthy lifestyle once and for all? We are talking about all aspects of your life. Being fit is not just physical. It's also your mind and soul. Learn how to take steps in your life to move towards your goals. Elizabeth's goal is for everyone listening to the sound of her voice to get fit. Let's get focused, let's get intentional, and let's transform. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Colon. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Misfit One Lifestyles with your girl, Elizabeth Colon, also known as Misfit One. And listen, this episode is going to be amazing. Because we're talking about wine, and wine is awfully fine. I guess is the one and only Krishan Lampley. How are you doing, girlfriend? Oh, hello, hello. So happy to be here this crazy season, this crazy time of year, but very happy to be here with you. Right? Listen, it is crazy. This, this is one of the most um, bipolar weather that for sure. Right. <laughs> it is I, freezing. It is freezing. Yeah. Why, why a lot of wine is not getting shipped today. I'll tell people right now, a lot of wine is not getting delivered today. It's too cold. It's too right, cold. Right. <laughs> right. Listen, when we, we, we're going to talk about wine. Um, this episode is for you, the people out there. You know, you'd be loving that wine. You want that bold, great tasteness. But what's so special about Krishan is she's a black female owner of corkscrew right love corkscrew love corkscrew and honey (laughs) I do love corkscrew (laughs) tell us about that process because that's kind of unheard of It definitely is unheard of. So I've been in the industry about 25 years now. I've owned Love Corkscrew eight years, over a million bottles sold. We're across the entire country from stores like Walmart to Mariano's to Total Wines and More to World Market to Whole Foods, you name it. Uh, And the process was not easy. There's literally out of African-American women that are uh, what I'm classified in the industry is a negociant. So either negociants, vineyard owners or winery owners, there's literally only 60 of us out of 111,000 in the world that do this. So six, zero, 60 of us. So I am definitely a unicorn in this industry. It's less than 1% of us. And uh, hopefully uh, this, uh, hopefully I can break every glass ceiling till there's no more to be broken, but not easy. Not easy yeah, it, it's in. not easy. You know, um, I have been doing my research on you and I am just totally in awe of you. I really am. Because, you know, when we think of wine, um, again, your face is not what I think of. You know what I mean? Uh, it it would not have never came to me uh, until I started researching you. And I'm like, Wow, you have really been changing the game out there. Um, and thank you. Can you can you kind of give us a little history on how you got into wine? Sure. Simple as, but as complicated as being in sales and marketing after college. Uh, I I worked on the avenue for years here in Chicago in high end retail. So during that experience, you learn how to communicate with anybody. Now, mind you, when I was a child, I was always in theater and always in in musicals and things. So I'm used to communicating amongst people. Uh, However, in my adulthood, to be able to sell to anybody, talk to anyone from any demographics, definitely was a gift that that I had and I developed. Or to doing so well in that in sales that I said I was sick of making money for everyone else. And I wanted to make money of my own. 
And one of my favorite things was always breaking bread with, with people and enjoying wine. When, when people were enjoying uh, Cosmos and Apple Martinis, I really was into wine flight. I always wanted to enjoy something different. So I took my love of people, sales, and also I used to own an art gallery in which uh, I wrote the wine list and we won Chicago's best as the wine as the best wine list. So I knew, okay, I had a knack for, for taste right. and, and able to, uh, again, communicate with others. And I said, okay, I'm going to do something everyone says there's no way I can do. They're like, you don't own a vineyard. There's no way you can do this. And I said, watch me. <laughs> and, and that was 10 years ago. So it took two years for me to to get it off the ground and, and running. So it was a lot of development, a lot of licensing. A lot of people don't know it's not, oh, because I like wine, I, I'm going to have my own wine company. Good luck with that. No, right. it's a lot more intricate. And uh, to this day, like I said, over a million bottles sold and still working. I just love that because um, Love Corkscrew is a lifestyle brand, right? It's not just like, oh, chuck a glass of wine and keep it going. It is definitely a hold experience you yes. engage all of the senses when you are um, experiencing your wine and I love the fact that you say you know you have this personality that is able to communicate with everybody like everybody. You have no problems getting there and talking um, and that really is a gift that really is a gift from God it seriously is. And like I said, since a child, I was able to do that. And it's so funny. I'm more comfortable in front of thousands of people than I am in front of one person. But I'm never uncomfortable with any individual in any situation, if that makes sense. That does. So it's, it, it, it's been like it was a childhood gift. And, and that's why I tell people a lot of times when uh, we talk about our passion and what we do and what we decide to do in our lives, it's, it's your passion following you. Because there's certain things that we're great at that are just innately in us that we don't even know sometimes until it kind of slaps you in the face. I'm like, oh, that's what, why? You know, now it right. makes sense. <laughs> you know, that that's very true because I remember I was probably about in the eighth grade or around that time, you know, when you start figuring out everybody got something that they're really good at. Right. Like, you know, um, I have a, a cousin who can sing like sang, like she sing to uh, President Obama, you know, and yes, I got yes. a, another cousin who can dance and she a choreographer and, and do like Sierra and all these amazing people. Again, I was like in the eighth grade going, you know, mm -hmm. well, I don't I don't have a talent. I, I can't I, I can dance, but I don't dance. Right. You know, and I. I can sing, but I can't sing. You know Dang, what I'm saying? Right. Uh, <laughs> I you get know, it. I get it. I don't I get, get it. it. And my dad said, you know, you definitely have a talent. Like, I don't have a talent. And his one of the things he said, what the thing he said was about me being able to speak to everyone See? and to make them feel comfortable and all this. And I'm yes. like, Daddy, you don't have to make up nothing. Like, you ain't got to right. just come up like, with something because that ain't a talent. That ain't a Boy, gift. is it? Boy, is it. And that's amazing. I talk to so many people who, who say, because uh, I did a TEDx, and there's yes. so many people who are like, oh, my God, I would have passed out, you know, to be to have to be on stage and, and do exactly in this realm of, of rules that you have to stay within and memorize lines. I never have a note card or anything because you can't. Uh, so it, it's one of those things you just have to kind of appreciate things. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people cannot do public speaking at all. Yeah, uh, so and that's crazy. And, and, yeah. and you took that, again, so smart. You know, uh, my platform is, is all about being fit. And when I say fit, I mean focus, intentional, and transforming, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, girlfriend. <laughs> if that is not you in uh, body form, everything that I'm saying, I, I'm just like in awe. You miss you mentioned your TED talk. Yes, I heard that. I love your story. You wanted to be Annie. Always, always. You can't play. see this this gray hair now, but it used to be red. <laughs> and I always wanted to be Annie. Yes, and uh, it it's just how you look back on things that happen in your life and how things in your mind 
did not work out, but they really were working out to Correct. create your future and create your journey. And that's what I believe I wanted to really tell my story. And, and it's funny when I asked, got asked to do a TED talk, it was pretty much an epiphany because I thought of so many subjects and I was talking to my publicist about different things that we can talk about because there's so many pieces and, and parts to my journey. But right. I literally kid you not, I was at my parents' home in Las Vegas. I had flown out there to see them. I woke up at four o'clock in the morning and it just hit me. I'm like, how success screwed me. Like <sighs> it, I was just thinking of all these different parts of my life and things that happened and what came out of them to create Love Corkscrew now. And it all made sense. It does. And, you know, we we want to make sure that you guys are really getting this because she is a person that went into an industry that's less than 1%. Right there alone would have scared most people. But can you let us in on your thought process? Like what made you say, yeah, no, I'm, I'm doing this. It's seriously kind of maybe a little bit of that, that only child syndrome of, of, you know, if somebody tells me I can't do something I'm like, uh-huh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> hold my it, beer. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hold right, my beer. I do it. And it was living in that world. I didn't grow up in an environment that looked like me. I was mm -hmm. one of the only black kids in my school growing up. So to go from that and being looked at a certain way, being bullied sometimes, being being told things that, you know, once you got an adult, you realize, wait a minute, that was really an actually extremely racist statement or, or whatever right. it was, you know? Right. And, and it, I learned so much, uh, so, so much in being able to be resilient within those times growing up, that when it came to something I wanted to accomplish and do, I tried it. And I'm one, and I get this from my mother, that if, if I fail, I fail, but I try. I never want to be that person who's 80 years old saying, I wish I could have, should have did it. I rather say I did it. I had a good dang time. I tried, didn't work out, but man, that was fun. That is who I am. And that's who I've always been since so even a kid. I would try everything, whether it be track, whether it be musicals, whether it be literature, what, whatever it was, I would try it out. That's and, awesome. and that's how that's who I am. And uh, this one found me. My passion found me. And, and when we when we talk about how you say your passion found you um, and, and taking your passion, your gift bringing it to here where we are at this moment in, in your your career because i mean listen honey 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 you you have to connect with her you have to go and and really see everything that this beautiful brilliant sister is up to you are going to be amazed first of all how can we connect with you Easy. Just love corkscrew on all social media. Love corkscrew. There's no dots, no commas. Just love corkscrew on every single platform. And of course, on LinkedIn, Krishan Lampley, uh, that you can totally reach out to me at any time. Yeah. And, and when you reach out to her, we're talking about her as an individual, which is mind blowing. I'm telling you guys. But her company, Love Cork Corkscrew, is all about wine. Can you tell us more about the wines, how you come sure. up with it and all that? So being in the industry for so long, I knew what was missing uh, based on being on that sales side. I worked in distribution for a little bit as well and ownership side of a bar and a wine bar specifically. And in working in all those sides, I knew it was missing in the industry years ago. Not everyone knows how to pronounce Bordeaux, Chianti and Chenin Blanc or care to. That doesn't mean they don't enjoy wine. Right. So I decided to come up with amazing labels that were double entendres. And I was the first African-American woman to do it. And that's just fun, catchy phrases. I good times, that. good friends, my Pino to head over heels, which is my reason. That's my number one seller in the country. It was me introducing wine and thinking about the consumer, thinking about what they would like. That you may not remember that it was a rosé, but you'll remember we go high. You may not remember that it's a Concord, which is more of my sweeter wines, but you're going to remember hard. Fun, easy, whimsical, 
double entendres that really spoke to the consumer. And Love Corkscrew just exploded from our wine to the candles, which are on target.com that have funny, whimsical, fun labels as well. Uh, and those are really doing great on target.com. So there's uh, there's so many moving parts to Love Corkscrew and uh, it's I, been really fun. I, I love it. You have one called um, We're Moving On Up. Yes, that's my Cabernet Sauvignon, yes. Oh my gosh. I You guys go to her website, lovecorkscrew.com and check out the names because you are absolutely right. I do not remember the names of my wines. A lot of people do not. Majority of people do not. I really right. don't. And I can pronounce it when you tell sure. me. I can go ahead, sure. girl, say it back to you, y'all. <laughs> so I love that. Are you going to remember it? But are you going to remember? But are you I remember don't that remember. vintage. Are you going to remember that was a 2018 Bordeaux? Are you really? Some do. Do not. Not I, wrong. said the cat. But not. Bingo. Not everyone. This is a $130 billion industry and there's all types of wine drinkers. There are some that specifically know exactly what vintage from exactly what country and exactly what lot and exactly what flavor profile. There are others. I'm like, okay, is it sweet? Is it dry? Right. So there's so many different people and thoughts to it. And I want it to be fun. And, and it is, I, I love it. It is designed for me. When I went on the website, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're talking my language. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like that good times and good friends. Yes, you know, it's, it's, yes. it's so awesome because, you know, um, a lot of times when people are into wine, mm-hmm. they're very, very sophisticated. Yes, yes, yes. You know, like yes. I think of wine and jazz, um, you know, I'm not grown enough for that. I got gray hair. I'm, I'll be 50 in a little bit, but I don't think I'm grown enough for that yet, right? I'm like, I, I'm I get not it. grown enough to sit at the big boy table because I'm goofy, I, get it. I laugh, I joke. Um, and this wine allows me to not feel silly um, because that's what happens, right? And, and I'm sure you yeah. found that. We get to a place and everybody is all dressed up and their nose is up in the air. And I'm exactly. like, that cabaret, blah, blah. right. There's a time and place for that, but there's also a time just to let your hair down and have fun. I'm like exactly. the most perfect gifting wine. I am the. I, I, my gosh, we're moving on up, which is my cab gets sold so many times for promotions and, and housewarming. Yeah. And, and I'm a great dinner to bring to, to a friend's house to have some dinner. So I, I, and I love that. And I love that space. And that's the space I want. I, I could talk technical terms with the best of them. But I also can just have some fun. I mean, I've been to people's house where they got scared thinking I was going to judge their wine. I'm like, no, whatever you have, whatever makes you happy, makes me happy. I'm a chameleon when it comes to that. So I, I wanted it to not be intimidating. And I think that's what And that's saying. exactly it. It is not intimidating because, you know, you show up to somebody's house with a bottle of Touch the Sky. You you really pretty much upsetting the party right there. Right. Right. And you, yes, <laughs> you're coming in. You don't have to say nothing. Just nothing. hold up that bottle of nothing. touch the sky, honey. That's it. That's it. And have a good time. And have a good time. <laughs> now you have all different. You have the reds, the whites, the sweets, the dries, um, yep. and you can do a wine club don't you offer a wine club I do I offer some amazing wine club I even have one just specifically for sweet lovers I have one for wine collectors where they can buy a whole case um, of all the mixed varietals so there's so many options uh it seems like my most popular one is the one where somebody gets a bottle and a gift each month so one bottle, you'll get a different bottle each time and a little gift from Love Corkscrew, whether it be a candle, whether it be a cute wine bag, or or I even have these great like ice cubes, these, these cooling ice cubes um, that, that are amazing for, for cooling wine. So uh, that seems to be my number one uh, wine club, but people order all the time on my website and you can just have fun picking different things. And candles too, and body butters and t-shirts, just it's a lifestyle, like you said. Right. And that, that's what I was saying. All the senses that that it you you actually touch all five senses, all five senses. Yeah. Yeah. The and crackle of the candle, the pouring of the glass, the smell. I mean, everything, everything. Yeah. I, I and, and that's awesome because it is not. In t- 
it draws me in more. And now here I am checking, what am I doing scrolling into a, you know, I have never went on a wine page and was like reading all the names of the wine. I can right, tell you right. honestly, I've never done that. Mm -hmm. Most people have not. And again, that's why, and that even just with my, my website, I want to make it entertaining. There's things from, uh, from my love seat episodes, which, which talk about entrepreneurship and my journey, just little three minute segments. And, and there's other things. There's watching my TED talk. There's learning about wine. There's enjoying just the labels and the visuals. So there's so many, so much activity on lovecorkstreet.com for them to see we're just, we're more than a wine company. We're definitely a journey. It is definitely a journey. Definitely. Um, when I, I, I really do think of it as a lifestyle um, because you not only have everything there for us, that's easy for us to pick it out because again, I, I'm not a big drinker anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. So most of the time I'm faking Jaking and I don't really be drinking nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, can you yeah. put my water in this pretty glass? Like I'm right. drinking something, you know, but it's also where me a novice not knowing anything yes. to go on and be able to say okay I like sweet wines so I'm going to look here or I like um dry here and so it takes like you said all the intimidating factors out of it gone and gone. you can feel confident in what you're picking out exactly um, it does it's not confusing and, and it's a great space to buy gifts. I have so many uh, non drinkers or non wine drinkers that are some of my number one customers, because I'm the perfect gift location because they have friends, co workers, associates that do enjoy a nice glass of wine. So I'm the easiest gift. Uh, during the holiday times, I sell so many gift certificates, uh, and people replenish them right away. It's, it's funny how just quick they're used. And, and they're great, again, great gifts uh, for friends and, and co workers and corporations as well. Yeah, and let's just talk about for a moment. You said that there is this love seat that section on your thing, and we're talking about entrepreneurship. Can you give us share with us just like three little tips that you would tell someone um, who is thinking about becoming an entrepreneur? Definitely know your gifts mm -hmm. and be able to delegate what you cannot do to someone else. Whether that be bartering, man, there was plenty of people who got a lot of free wine when I first started my business. Right. Because I could not afford them, could not afford them. But I made sure they were taken care of and I and I helped they helped me with their skill set in developing the company. So there's that. And then there's just the simple one, two, three punch that you have to do, whether that's registering and getting an EIN. Mm -hmm. Or that's trade naming. Mm -hmm. When I say trade naming, let me break that down. Please. It's not about, oh, I made this pretty logo and oh my God, I don't want anybody to take that. What about your name? Your name is more important. If someone took my logo, I would have been okay back then. But if somebody took Love Corkscrew, I would have had a problem. So it's spending the money to do that. So get registered as a business get trade named as a business and start that social media platform even before you develop into a full-fledged company, because that's going to be your best procurement on if your idea makes sense. See if somebody's interested. Who's interested? You're completely doing all that free marketing by just using some of these amazing platforms we have now that we did not have when I started. Right. I wish I had had Instagram back then. I wasn't even barely on Facebook back then. You're so many opportunities to grab consumers from all over the world in whatever you decide to do. So start that. Start that before you spend too much money. And when you grab those platforms and you grab that name of your company, that is evidence that that's your name. You can utilize that when it comes to any trade name situations that you may have. If somebody took your name, right? Yeah. I have history showing that I had Love Corkscrew from early 2000 before I even started the company. So just 
that's my, my definitely simple tip to start. And, and that's so important. You know, it's so crazy. We don't even think of those things. Um, I'm, I'm misfit one, right? I've been misfit one for like 20 years exactly. and probably about three years ago. Mm -hmm. If that, you know, uh, because um, I didn't think about it. A lot of people don't think about it. But what we, that's so good. It was a incident that happened not too long ago was um, Alabama, um, the country singer. They changed their name. The lady, I know, Lady A. I think I remember. Yes. 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 And there was a blues woman who won. Yes. And that was such an important lesson. That made me go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let me make sure I secure it. Because you never know in instances like that. Or I think a lot of people think it's rare. However, understand that because of the new age that we're in, it's not as rare. Right. It was rare when you were just focusing on dot coms and you really weren't worried about Instagram and right. Facebook and people seeing you from around the world. Now people can see you from around the world, right? A matter of a click that didn't exist before. So that's what makes it even more important now. Something may go viral. What, what if you did something great and it went viral and somebody else saw you from another country, another part of the world? I was like, wait a minute, that's my name. Right. Wait a minute. No, that's my logo. There's certain things. So you have to be very aware and very cautious of that and, and solidify everything. I, I'm so happy you brought that up because a lot of us, when I say us in our culture, um, Black, uh, you know, I, I always talk about Black girl magic, you know, um, mm -hmm. African-American culture. We really do not um, talk about those things, right? No. We, it just wasn't, you know, get get your name. That's, this is how I was told back in the day. Get your name that started with a, uh alphabet that's to the beginning of the yellow pages, right? So you mm -hmm. want like an A, a B, a C. You didn't yes. want to be at the back of the uh, yes. uh, uh, yellow pages. And now yeah. yellow pages don't even exist anymore. Doesn't even exist. Yeah, yeah, right? It's, it's not doesn't... even about that. And I, I will caution, if anybody is listening to anything I said, this is the biggest caution that I see that people spend the most money on. And to me, it's the least important thing. And that's photo shoot. People will spend more money when they start a business but yet they didn't do any of the things I said to do. <laughs> but because they have an idea, they take this lavish, ridiculously expensive, serious photo shoot mm -hmm. to post on Facebook that they're starting a business. Yeah. But you have nothing else besides that. But you spent all this money on this very <laughs> expensive photographer to do this expensive thing, but you have nothing else to show for it. That five, six hundred thousand dollars should have really been spent on legitimizing your business. The photo shoots will come. The fun will come. The feeling pretty and handsome and all that will come. Establish a business first. That's a great point. That's so funny. Is that That is a great point because true. I know a lot of people like, girl, I'm going to get a photo shoot. And I was my my fan within my family. This happened couple of around Christmas time when it was they want to do a photo shoot for this layout and I'm like girlfriend you have uh listen the cameras on these phones now are, are, are fantastic <laughs> that's all my photo shoots that's all my headshots and trust me I know amazing photographers and so I'm not trying to take their business away from them however no. I want them to have repeat customers there you go once that business is established, correct, that can become a repeat customer, not just a one photo shoot. So consider that the my photographers I've used for years, mm -hmm. and they've made good money off of me for years, mm -hmm. because I was established business first, then I need it for products. I need it not just to smile and look cute. There's other things that I, I need their photography skills for. So I'm not trying to take any money away from photographers. So no, listen, you said it right. <laughs> look, you said it right. You ain't got to go back and say it because you said it right. You said when you about to start that business. You yes. said it. I heard you. I, listen, I heard you and they heard you. Don't be coming out here talking about we talking about photographers. We said. Not at all. Not at all. Because that is true. We, um, Especially women. 
Uh, Especially women. We, of course, we want to feel good, right? We, we want to feel good about mm-hmm. ourselves. But there's there's that grunt work that needs to be done. There's the not so sexy um, that has to be done and put in place for. It. And now is the time with all these grant opportunities, with all these amazing low interest loans for businesses, with all these corporations saying, "Come on, let's roll." You right. have to have all that in place, or you're not going to get any of these grants unless you have an EIN, unless your taxes are complete, unless you have a real business with a real bank account that is connected to your EIN, you cannot get any of this free money out there. So do what's important first, then have fun. Yeah. And then we'll do the photo shoot. Have fun. Have fun later. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And because I think I'm, I'm sort of that type of person, though, I'm a fun, um, I, I consider myself sort of like a Walt Disney, right? Like I come up with all these crazy, amazing Great ideas, ideas. Mm-hmm. but I don't know how to do that. Like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Can you do that? No, but I know it's going to be amazing. This would be great. Um, so you're right. Get in that grunt work. Make sure yes. you know what work. you're getting to. Put in the work, it, it, and, and it and it shows when your product. I mean, it shows. It will pay off. It will yeah, pay off. It really do. Now, listen. What is your top sellers right now? Because of winter, I'm, I want to talk about because we in winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My number one in during the winter time. Now, my number one overall is my Riesling Head Over Heels. That just outsells all my other varietals like times five. So that is my baby. It's an amazing semi sweet, semi sweet. So it just fits in that most perfect space. I'm a dry lover, um, and they're sweet lovers, and we both love Riesling. Uh, my my Riesling specifically. And then uh, I would say because of winter time. Uh, well, who, what we talked about before, we're moving on up by Cabernet Sauvignon, because uh, that is just an amazing uh, winter wine. So that one does well because it's that perfect dry space. So uh, those are my number one and two. And lastly, um, I would say my three, but not lastly, because I have seven varietals. Um, but I would say the next one leading the pack is my Pinot Grigio, which is called Good Times, Good Friends. That's been number one in Whole Foods for a long time now. So uh, that one does amazing. So I have something for everyone, those sweet Moscato uh, lovers that love Cooper's Hawk, my red hard knock life and my white touch the sky. Trust me, you'll fall in love. I've had plenty of people cancel other wine memberships just for those two wines if you're a sweet lover. <laughs> I, I'm definitely, listen, I, I want to be, I, I, not I want to be, I'm going to be, you understand what I'm saying? A uh, member because... I am not a big wine drinker, but when I do have wine, I want my wine, right? Like I, right, and I, right. I want it to be on hand. And, and the reason I stay away from white wine is because it has to be chilled. I don't, I'm not yeah. that, get out of here. I don't know. Yeah, I'm you're not, like, you're not going to do all that, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I didn't and prepare fine. that well. Like I didn't know we was going to have wine. I might, you know, you come over, let's have wine. Um, and then I'm like, oh, I didn't chill it. I didn't do this. That's okay. The trick I tell non-wine drinkers or wine novices all the time, literally you put it in your sink, fill your sink with some water, put some ice cubes in there. It will be chilled in 15 minutes. That simple. Don't overthink it. People overthink it. Totally overthink it. Like, oh no. And they're rushing like, oh, let me stick this in the refrigerator or the freezer. And then they put it in the freezer and they forget about it and it explodes. Bus, uh-huh. no. I've heard that Put it in your sink. 15 minutes. By the time that person takes off their coat and you guys start kikiing, your wine will be perfectly chilled and you can pour a lovely glass. Listen, you guys, uh, that tip is hot right Simple. there because uh, I think you you must have seen my freezer. I done bust them. Oh, I put them in I've there and the I time. forget. I'm like, all oh, the time. God. All the time. All the time. I hear it so much. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. So white wines, red wines. And then what is what is something that when people are having this seafood mm-hmm. melody, because I, I don't eat meat. So I'm always yes. asking about seafood. What's a good wine to go with that? Seafood is great with a Pinot or Sauvignon Blanc. So something that's dry, light um, and acidic. Acidity is a good thing. Acidity will always make everything taste better. And any of the seafood realm, any of that flavor profile will make the wine even enhance that flavor. So you want to keep it, you think of what is in ingredients, and that will be the easiest 
the easiest answer to picking the right varietal. I'll give you an example. Please. So let's say you had a great piece of Dover sole or salmon uh, or white fish. What do you normally marinate that are seasoned with? Olive oils, butters, herbs. So think, okay, butter, herb, what's herbal has a little bit of butter. Oh, Chardonnay. <gasps> so just think of it that way. It's so easy. A great reason, a great th thought process from the Cabernet Sauvignon, why that makes sense with steaks and lamb chops and things. You think, okay, how do I season my lamb chops or my steak? Or if we're a vegan or vegetarian, my eggplant, Parmesan. Yeah. So you think of pepper. I use a lot of pepper on, on that. I season, I use a lot of balsamic vinegar. Um, so my uh, eggplant, Parmesan, I'm using a lot of the acidic tomato sauce and, and things like that, mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. cheeses. Okay, what makes sense? What has a peppery, rich flavor? Peppery, rich, oh, Cabernet Sauvignon. So literally you think of the wine as the ingredients and that makes it all make sense. Sweet, sweet. What do I love? One of my favorite things is a charcuterie board and with a little mm -hmm. blue cheese and a little honey on it. Yes. So if I do that, okay, a sweet wine is gonna make sense with the cheeses. Because a little bit of honey or fruit goes with cheese. So your charcuterie is great with sweet wines. It's so simple. I always say, enjoy it, think it, don't overdrink it. I mean, don't overthink it. Because you really are taking what's on the back of the label. The winemaker is telling you. If we don't tell you exactly what to eat with it, we're at least telling you the flavor profile and the ingredients that make sense. It'll say herbal. It'll say peppery. It'll it say does. Sweet. It <laughs> says it. So just think about how you cook. Just wow. think about how you cook. Oh, I mean, mind blowing it right it. there. Because it's just an enhancement. So simple. <laughs> Where have you been my whole life? Where a lot of people say that. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm used to it. This. Because that makes so much sense. I really do overthink it. Um, because yeah. Listen, I have very sophisticated friends. Mm -hmm. And the way I would pick my wine um, usually works out. Usually work out. I pick by the label. If it's a real yeah. pretty. <laughs> yeah. I am horrible. And I just be showing up just smiling with my little wine. Because that's not a bad thing. Do not. No, no, no. Let me tell you. That's the number one reason why people buy wine. It's the label. Yeah. Number two, the price. Number three, the taste. People will go back for one and two. Yeah. And maybe think the taste is all right, uh, but so it's something pretty. you know. Yeah. You know it, right? So you know you can manage your expectations on the taste. So no, do, do not be embarrassed by that. That is one of the number one reasons why people buy wine. I think it's so funny because everybody be like, oh, that's such a good wine. I said, I, mm -hmm. And my husband was like this, you ain't even... Don't ever be knowing what you're talking about. No, I didn't know what I was talking a... about. But <laughs> I love that because I'm about common sense. I love where you say, don't overthink it. Just don't. drink it. I like, yes. you know, because it does get in my head. Um, and then therefore it does uh, um, dampen the experience for me. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's, intimid it's intimidating. It's Wine intimidating. is intimidating. I, I, I can never tell anybody it's not. It totally is. It's a very intricate. Um, very difficult industry. It has a lot of moving parts. There's a lot to the process from the time it's grapes to the time it hits the bottle. It's a very, very difficult process in industry. And it's an art form. So yes, it is intimidating, but, but we try to make it a little less. I love this. You know, you have really given us so much information and I feel so emboldened. Like I'm going to get some wine. I'm about to start <laughs> shopping online. Lovecorkscrew.com. Here I am. I'm going to just make sure that I am a part of the wine club because one, you are really helping our community and uh, helping us as women, uh, entrepreneurs, and it's just such a, a feeling that is uh, so overwhelming um, to see all the things that you have accomplished. 
And I love it. I always say if I could affect one person to follow their dreams, then I've done my job. And it, and if it's not inspiring, it, it's definitely I, I'm able to hire people from the community. Um, but I love the mentor process as well, from little kids to, to adults, to people who've been in business longer than I have. Uh, there's certain things that I've been through within my industry that I can use to help others. So I'm always here to support and, and help people make it to the next level because we have we're, we're bigger than who we are. You know, a lot of times your your journey may not be about you. It may be to help others. And that's what I'm here for. You're amazing. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I really appreciate you taking time out, speaking with us today. And My before I wrap it up, though, I got to ask you this. Sure. No, you are a boss, babe. You are a boss, babe. How do you do your self-care? How do you take care of yourself? Like, what, what does your morning look like when you wake up? I have to work out. If I don't, um, I like I like cycling, so I'm trying to get back into it as much as I as I used to. I used to do it several times a week, so I'm starting to get back into it again. But it's really taking the time uh, to just clear my mind, because again, there's so many moving parts. Um, just between today, my phone's going off like crazy now. Um, in the distributors and salespeople and ambassadors and customers and stores, and it's it's I'm nonstop being pulled at in many different directions. I have older parents that live in Las Vegas, so I have to take care of them. So there's so many things. So there it has to be a time that you are able to be in the moment. Mm whether it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever time you have in the morning or at evening, whatever uh, works, for you. works for you. I just yeah. try to be in the moment, breathe, clear my mind, whether it's thinking about an ocean, whether it's thinking about the sky, just something, a, a beach, just something just to clear my mind of everything and then get to it. Uh, and that's how I take care of myself. And then I definitely have to, because I'm working from home now a lot, and when I travel, I tend to travel for business. I try to get away outside of business at least once every other month, um, whether it's just a weekend to go someplace, a concert, um, to have dinner in a special city, just to get away. And I try, try, try. I'm not going to lie and say I don't look at emails at all when I'm there, but I try my hardest to take the time to put the phone down um, and, and just focus on, on the now because life is too short. So as much as you work, if you're not here, what are you doing it for? I love it. I love it. And I love you. You are absolutely delightful. I am so, so honored to be speaking with you today and everybody out there. I know you got something from this. Now, you can go to that wine section and, you know, look her up. She's going to be able to take care of all your wine needs and all your senses, baby. Don't worry <laughs> about it. You got that right. <laughs> oh, thank you again. And next time, you guys, we'll, we'll have more information. But until then, live fit. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Miss Fit One Lifestyles. Listen, when you are fed up and sick and tired of living this stifled overwhelmed and overstressed life and you're ready to live the fullest richest and healthiest life by gaining more confidence more energy and more clarity living in your best self you know what to do right go ahead go to my website misfitone.com Sign up for our online courses, Creating Healthy Habit, so that you too can live fit, focus, move with intention, and transform your life.